Today we're talking about properties. And properties consist of uh, something that looks like a class, but or looks like a method, but it doesn't have parentheses because it's really a container for a value. And within it, there's two uh, accessors, which look like methods, but which also don't have parentheses because they're really just for either setting or getting the value. So there's essentially two flavors of accessors. Uh, one that has a get and set that has a body with curly braces and one that has no body. And if we want to look at these uh, two types, Here's one that has no body. It just has a get with a semicolon and a set with a semicolon. And this essentially sort of implies that the value is contained within the, uh, the property itself. Just the fact that it's defined as int, my int prop becomes a data value in effect. And then there's other types that do have a body and these are more like the classical class uh, format where you have private data and public methods. And essentially this has a, another variable. In this case it's uh, private. And to do a get it essentially just says return private. And to do a set it essentially says private equals value, where value is a special keyword that uh, that's defined as what it's set to in the external program. For instance, if we look at the external program, uh, this is saying uh, well, initially it's defining a class and then it's saying the class dot the property equals 63. So this would be accessing the set accessor. And then when you do a return value from it, like here you have an internally defined value, uh, ret int, and you say it equals to class name, property name, that's accessing the get accessor. And let's see, what else did I want to talk about here? Oh yeah, the property has a different icon. If you look up here, say we select this property, there's a hand pointing to a notepad. That's essentially the property value. If you look at a private integer, See, there's a different icon for privately defined value. If you look at this, there's a different icon for a publicly defined data item. So, I think we've covered this through this. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the read-only property. And essentially that has a get with no set. So in this case, uh, we could just have this value that returns the, the get. But this doesn't exist. So we can't set it externally. And one way you can get rid of code that you might want to bring back is you can use a control E C and that will comment out this code so this now becomes read only. And then if you want to uncomment out again you can do control E U which uncomments it. And there's two buttons up here that also serve the same function. Uh, this comments out and this uncomments. I don't know, 
I feel like I'm rambling. Don't you feel like I'm rambling? <laughs> So we've covered read-only, and if you have a read-only value like that, it's going to have to be set within the class, maybe passed to a constructor or something along those lines. We covered the uh, using Control E C and Control E U to comment out code. Covered read only. So another thing you can do within uh, a class is uh, in the set you can say if there's only this range of values, say if value greater than zero and value less than 10 for instance and then say else And we can use our shortcut for message box. Just hit tab twice. Uh, display a message that says something along the lines of uh, invalid value for property. So this will only allow you to uh, set this. It would be nice if it would automatically indented that. This will only allow you to set this to the values 1 through 9. So you can have code that uh, protects your uh, data. It doesn't allow invalid data to be put in. Let's see if that covers everything. Yep, everything I wanted to talk about. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe.